price to book value. What does that mean and how do you apply it to your investing? If you're trying to put together a thesis as to what to invest in when you're looking at some of these cannabis stocks or any stocks in general, price to book value may be an interesting way to look at things. Price to book value answers the question, what is total market capitalization of a company versus its assets? Typically, and by typically, I mean the S&P 500 trades right now at about 3.87 uh, price to book value. Meaning, if a company had, say, $1 billion in total equity, assets less liabilities, then the stock would be trading at $3.87 billion in total market capitalization, however many shares outstanding they have. So you use this ratio to determine what's the average, which are trading below, and is there something there? Now, I looked at the statistics on cannabis stocks. There are only a handful of stocks trading above the average price to book value. The rest are trading below one, which means you'd be able to sell off the entire company's assets in a fire sale and get more than you would out of the market capitalization. Cannabis stocks are not exactly popular right now. Things may be cha changing very soon. So I wanted to take a look at this to show mathematically or quantitatively how low these stocks are, especially when you compare them to the broader stock market. Let's jump in. Let's take a look at a couple of charts and some statistics. For those of you who are just joining, um, cannabis stocks are starting to get a little bit of a play, if you will. Federal government looks like they're going to try and do a few things, take a few steps. Hopefully legalization will be one of them. And uh, all of a sudden I'm starting to get a lot of interest at the channel. Thank you for stopping by. Make sure to hit the like and follow button to find out more about how to invest in cannabis stocks. And like I said, we are going to be looking at price to book value today. I've got the full chart of all 105 stocks publicly traded that are pure play cannabis stocks up on my website. Make sure you uh, uh, head down to the links down below to click over and find that. Now, this is the S&P 500 um, price to book value going back a little more than 20 years. And as you can see, we're trading, the S&P 500 is trading well above the average for the S&P 500. Uh, for price to book value. Typically, it looks like it. the median is actually, of if you looked at all these and you asked the question, what's the, what's the average here? 1.87, I think, is the number that I saw. So right now, where the stocks are at this point, and that could be an economic indicator for you to sit there and look at, or a trading indicator to look at and say, yeah, stocks are a little expensive right now. And this is one variable that would kind of point that out. But when we look at cannabis stocks, they sort of are in a different world altogether. Here are the numbers. First off, I have 105 pure play cannabis stocks. Not the ancillary companies like Scott's Grow or something like that where they provide fertilizer or um, any hydroponic growing manufacturers, things like this. Not interested in that. I want the people who are the companies that are actually hands-on cannabis producers, distributors, whatever that product may be. Still out of the 105 that I have, 17, we have yet to get their financial statements for Q2, but some of these are off by one month, so that's not a big deal. Some of these companies, I want to say a handful of them, we're still waiting on December. Yeah, that's a big deal. Um, I used the 2.0 number because as we showed in the chart, today's prices for the S&P 500 are a little bit high. So I asked the question at 2.0, where are these? Um, there are 19 numbers, uh, 19 stocks above, 59 below, and 11 of them are actually negative, meaning they have more liabilities than assets. 
So their total equity is negative. Now that those companies could easily refinance, bring in some more capital, maybe dilute their stock, whatever it may be that they need to do to get to above. Nonetheless, if we looked at just the 59 to the 19, a significant number of stocks are trading well below the average for the S&P 500 when the S&P 500 was average. Some of these numbers are astounding. And I say this because when you look at some of the numbers, they're trading below one a lot. And here's the thing with that. If you have a hundred million dollars worth of assets, but your market capitalization is 25 million, that will show up in the chart as 0.25. Meaning your assets are four times more than the valuation of your company. And there are a lot of great companies out there. But is that necessarily a buy signal? You also have to ask a few more questions instead of just bumper sticker investing. Once you start digging through and you start looking at some of these companies, one of the first metrics that you should be asking is, is this company profitable? If they're not, okay, well, how close to profitability are they? Have they hit EBITDA profitability and has that been consistent? If not, then the fact that this company may be trading well below uh, its book value, its market capitalization is below its book value, that could be indicative of a, uh, investors just kind of sour on the stock because the company is losing money. The pathway forward doesn't look exactly outstanding. There are a lot of variables at play there. But if you're looking at a stock that is trading at, say, 0.5 market capitalization versus book value, and they are profitable, that could be an opportunity for an astute investor. So this gives us the ability to look at stocks in a certain way and ask the question, is it below market value? Now, I have... Um, the entire, let me switch over my screens. Okay, looking here, I have in this column all the stocks, and again, there are 105, and this is all alphabetical. Here's Q1, here's Q2, total equity, and of course, this is multiplied by uh, 1 million, so it would be 19 and 18 and a half million for total equity market capitalization, uh, price to book value for Q1 and then Q2, price to book ratio um, in this column. And what we can do is we can sort ascending. And unfortunately, when I hit sort ascending, it puts the negatives first. And as you can see, uh, some of these are actually Kona, Hold, Kona Gold Holdings is a stock that I have a lot of interest in. Uh, Bang Chocolate, Jushi, and High Tide. These are all companies that are near profitability or going to be taking off. So their current capitalization may be off a little bit. But then when we start sc scrolling through and looking at 0 0.01 for Ionic Brands, this is outstanding to me because Ionic Brands is being acquired by Your Way ca Cannabis. Uh, that deal was just announced in April. So there's premium involved here. So for an astute investor, that means there is basically free money. But cannabis stocks are not exactly in favor right now. Let's scroll through. But you can find, like Halo Collective, of course, I think they're lucky to be at 0 0.01. And unfortunately for Halo Collective, they had a conda is the company that was spun off. They had a tremendous amount of, uh, they had 12 and a half million shares of Aconda, which IPO'd at four bucks, but shot up to about 12 bucks. That was a tremendous amount of cash available for Halo Collective. 
and they were able to start selling that right about now, about 50% of those shares. Short sellers came in and drove uh, Akonda down to 10% of that value. And that's just too bad because Halo actually had some form of a shot at that point. Moving downward, there are some excellent companies in here that are trading significantly. Tilt Holdings, I can't believe is at 0 0.2, um, that are trading at significant levels below. And should you go through this list, a vast majority of them are trading below one, which means not so much that the stock itself is trading at a valuation that basically states, well, this is a company, they're getting there, their assets are worth X, their market capitalization is worth Y, and they may lose a little bit of money in the next couple quarters. Nonetheless, they're going to turn a profit here pretty soon. And investors would typically price that in. In the case of all these stocks trading below one, which is more than half, that means 50 per, over 50% 50 of the stocks, the cannabis stocks that are publicly traded right now are trading well below their total equity. If you sift through this list and you look at it, you may find that there are some stocks that are great values and will move forward. Should federal legalization push through, we do expect something to happen here in the next, either this week or next week with regard to the Senate pushing something through. It's possible the executive branch might step in, Biden, and do something. And this will invigorate a lot of these stocks. So this may be an excellent time to be looking at metrics like this and take advantage of them. If you're looking for the full list, make sure you hit the link uh, down below. Also, make sure you hit the like and follow. If you're interested in learning how to use these kinds of metrics to line up your investments, I've got a video course down below. Make sure you click on that. We'll see you in the next video.